out-of-body experience is essentially the temporary separation of consciousness from the body. And it's a very natural experience that people for thousands of years have experienced in every culture, in every society around the world. Uh, many people pursue out-of-body experiences because, number one, they want answers. They want to absolutely know from experience that they continue. In other words, what are the big questions? And what are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? And what is our purpose? Out-of-body exploration can provide these answers. And they provide them in a very powerful way because they're experienced. And that's the way the answers that's the only way that the answers are really known to us. Out-of-body exploration provides a way for us to go beyond beliefs. Because most people live their entire life basing their existence upon cultural beliefs that they've learned. And, you know, we have to just look at it objectively. What would you believe today if you were born in Iraq or Iran. Your belief system would be totally different. Out-of-body exploration provides an effective way for us to actually discover the answers for ourselves, to step beyond, to go beyond beliefs, to go beyond speculation, go beyond theory, and to experience it firsthand. And this is incredibly empowering for people. Uh, many people, for instance, find that this is the most life-changing event in their life because for the first time they see and experience themselves separated from their physical body. They realize that they are not their bodies and that their body is just a temporary vehicle of consciousness. And this is a, an awakening experience for, for many, many people. Also, people can make it many benefits from this because they can begin to actually experience their spiritual essence. They, many people have profound spiritual experiences with out-of-body experiences. Not only do they leave their bodies, but they connect with their spiritual essence. They become one with their spiritual essence. And they move beyond all the limited concepts of form and time and space and they experience what they truly are beyond this, uh, let's just say, dense dimension of reality. And this is an incredibly empowering experience. It's really difficult to describe because it's an awakening of the entire consciousness of the individual. It's a powerful awakening. Out-of-body experiences are natural. We are soul, we are spiritual beings. We are only temporarily inhabiting this body. This body is not what we are. And sometimes we forget this. We're so conditioned to believe that we are this dense body that we often forget that this is simply not us. As a spiritual being, what would be most natural but to experience your true self. And your true self is beyond your physical body. Your true spiritual essence lies inward, beyond the body. The out-of-body experience is absolutely the most natural experience you can possibly have because you're reconnecting with your own spiritual essence. You're reconnecting, re-experiencing your true self. And what could be more natural than this? In 1972, I was a student at uh, University of Maryland. And a friend of mine had a vivid, memorable out-of-body experience. And it changed his life. Uh, I was an agnostic at the time. And I didn't believe any of this stuff was real. And after my friend had his spontaneous out-of-body experience, I decided I had to explore this for myself and discover it and make sure it's real for myself. So the first thing I discovered is that there was techniques that there was that we could do to initiate our own out-of-body experience. 
and I began to practice the target technique which is visualizing three objects. I did this every day for three weeks and finally after some frustration I had my first out-of-body experience. I was laying in a dorm room sideways facing a wall and when I awoken I found that I could put my hand absolutely through the wall and it shocked me because then I realized oh my god I did it. Now think of this goes back to 1972 so it's been quite a while ago but that was a big moment for me because then I proved to myself that yes this is real. The next thought was I like to th think of myself at the foot of the bed and I was standing by the foot of my own bed. And I was absolutely there, absolutely real, it was not a dream. And as I focused to the end of my small dorm room, I realized that I could see beyond the old limits, beyond the old walls, and I noticed that somebody was watching me. And to be honest, it, was, it scared me a little bit and next thing I knew I was back in my body. Now, that was a brief experience, but it was a life-changing experience for me because I went from being an agnostic to absolutely being a knower that, yes, this is real, yes, I can do it myself. Other dimensions must exist. Other people must live in these dimensions. But more importantly, I have the ability, I have the power to actually explore this myself. And I remember staying up all night very excited, writing down how my entire paradigm of life has totally changed. And uh, from that point on, I began my 35-year exploration of this topic in great detail. One of the things that we have discovered from out-of-body exploration is that the universe is a multi-dimensional continuum. And that the physical world that we see around us is nothing more than the thin epidermis layer of the entire universe. When we leave our bodies, we go inward. The term out of body is a little bit uh, incorrect because in a way we go inward. We shift our consciousness from a dense energy body to a finer vibratory body. And we leave our bodies in this finer vibratory body. What happens essentially is when people leave their body they enter another dimension of reality they enter another let's just say less dense dimension of reality and what I and others have discovered is that there are many many countless energy dimensions this is now referred to in new physics theories that there, there are many dimensions and of course even in for 2,000 years, the biblical texts have been talking about the concept of heaven, of hell, of purgatory. All of these are actually different dimensions of reality. The term heaven is just an, a, a biblical explanation of this multi-dimensional reality that exists beyond the physical. In my 35 years of having out-of-body experiences, I have experienced and witnessed countless different dimensions of reality and many different kinds and different people live there and it's many of these dimensions are actually very much like the physical world except of course they're vibrating at a different frequency they're less dense than this physical world when we leave our bodies we actually enter these other realities and this is what is so exciting about out-of-body exploration is that you can absolutely go and experience these other realities for yourself. You can actually go and experience, can actually see and communicate with, for instance, people that have died, person to person, face to face. And this is an incredibly uh, enlightening experience from, from many people. Uh, in the beginning, when, when people begin to explore out-of-body exploration, they often will stay very close to their home. They will stay very close to their physical surroundings. This is because most people are conditioned to believe 
that they are form-based, that their home is their true reality. Many people in their first out-of-body experiences will find themselves in a physical-like representation of their physical surroundings. In other words, they will still be, in, be able to experience their home, their physical surroundings. It may be changed a little bit, but it will, it's often quite the same. It's, uh, it's actually quite easy to adapt to because you can still move around in the same way you did before. Uh, often people will experience uh, for, uh, an energy duplicate of their physical surroundings. And it's uh, pretty easy to adapt to because you will create the energy body that is a duplicate of your physical body. For instance, most people will be able to walk like they do in the physical world. It's not the airy-fairy experience that many people have been taught to believe. In fact, many people consider it to be so physical-like that it's difficult to tell the difference between an out-of-body experience and a physical experience. And I actually provide techniques where you test the experience. Uh, you, you go to a wall and see if you can't put your hand through the wall. It's a, very, it's a much more grounded experience than many, many people have been led to believe. And of course, this is expanded as you expand your state of consciousness. When we leave our bodies, our higher self will direct the experience. And our higher self will take us, in a sense, will allow us to experience what we need to know to evolve as quickly as possible. It's not, it's, I didn't orchestrate anything. What people, and it's not just based on my experiences, but also the 16,000 people that have written to me over the years. We will automatically begin to experience information we need about ourselves, information that's important to our personal development. And I needed to know at some level, where did I come from? What was my past? Why and how did that impact me today? And then suddenly I started even spontaneously having past life experiences where I would find myself uh, at first a spontaneous experience where I was a German soldier and I'm in a tank during World War II. And then I had multiple experiences of myself as a German soldier. Very vivid. This is not a dream. I was there. I could smell the oil. I could sm sm see the grime on my uniform. It was a very gut-wrenching personal experience where I knew I was this soldier. And I realized at that point that I actually died on the Russian front during World War II. And I quickly realized that this German soldier provided certain attributes I needed today. And because everything's a continuum, I learned quite quickly that not only is the universe a multi-dimensional continuum, but that we, each of us, we are multi-dimensional continuums of consciousness. And we grow and evolve by our many, many experiences, both in the physical world and also in the non-physical worlds. And as you go, begin to have out-of-body experiences, you begin to connect with these experiences. You begin to, to know more of your entire expansive timeline. Because we are the end result of many, many, maybe thousands of experiences, thousands of lifetimes. We're all different. And I wanted to be, I began to explore it. I wanted to know what, what I was. Where did I go? What kind of experiences did I have? And for many people, this is quite a life-changing event because we're so focused on this linear, we're so focused on ourselves now. But once you realize that we're much more expansive, it really opens your mind to the potential of what we are and where we're going. My ego mind is not, not the me that's in control. Our higher self will take control of our experiences. Call it soul, call it higher consciousness, call it any term you wish. But it's a higher aspect of ourselves will take control of our out-of-body experience. And we will be provided what we need to learn. 
uh, this, this opens up a lot of doors that were unexpected for me. For instance, many people begin to have experiences of moving inward. They begin to feel themselves moving through layers of color, moving through layers of light. Uh, and this will happen for many people spontaneously. And they will find themselves actually moving beyond the physical world, moving beyond even the physical-like world and the astral world, and moving into non-form non areas. And this, this can happen quickly and rapidly. Now, what I have found, and one of the things that I started to do back in 1973 and 1974, I began to demand to experience my higher self. And for me, it's probably been the most life-changing part of out-of-body experiences. And just briefly, what happens for many people is, you move away from your body in a normal out-of-body experience. I ask for awareness now, just to center myself and to bring more clarity. And then I demand to experience my higher self. And what happens to me and many people is that you're suddenly, you're moving inward or it feels upward at incredible speeds, going through layers of color, layers of light, going higher and higher and higher. You feel like you're being stretched across the entire universe. And the end result is that often you're floating in this magnificent sea of white light. And it's hard to describe this, but thousands of people have written to me that have had the same type of experience. And everything is available, all answers. You're, it's far, no longer form. You move beyond all form. You move beyond symbols. You move beyond the old, old communication. You're suddenly in a pure light, pure knowledge, pure wisdom environment. And you're floating in a sea of light and you have access to all answers. Everything is there. And this experience is readily available for all people who pursue out-of-body exploration. Matter of fact, this is the central thing that I teach, not only in my books, but in my workshops. I want people to go beyond not only the physical world, but to go beyond the astral world. Go beyond form. Go to the source of what we are. Experience what you truly are. And you must go beyond form. And that's one of the powerful things about this. Now, people experience this in different ways. Some people may experience a void. They're just floating in a void of stars. And again, they may have access to answers. For me, it's always a sea of light. But different people experience this in different ways. But it's a life-changing event that really uh, opens people up to the vastness of what we are. Many people are so conditioned to believe that these form-based realities are what's real. One of the, let's just say, funny things I have found is that the opposite is true. Form is not reality. Form is the opposite of reality. Reality is non-form-based. What happens automatically as we prolong an out-of-body experience is that our form-based body, call it your astral body or energy body, will begin to dissolve. Your, if you look at your hands or your arms, they will begin to dissolve away. It's because they're not real. They're a mental construct. Soul, consciousness, it does not have these silly appendages. We as soul are far beyond that. As you prolong your out-of-body experience, your arms and legs will just begin to melt away. And many people become concerned because they feel that that is them. It is not you. That's just the outer vehicle that you're using that's no longer needed. As I prolong my out-of-body experience, I quickly dissolve my body and become a point of light or a globe of light or like a teardrop. And I have had thousands and thousands of people tell me the same thing. In other words, the form-based realities that we are so conditioned to and feel if are real will begin to dissolve away because we are moving inward. 
It's not like the external world is changing. We are changing. As you prolong your experience, as you prolong your out-of-body experience, we automatically become what we naturally are as soul, as consciousness. And that is non-form based. And we move inward naturally. And as we move in naturally, all the outer attributes, the vehicles that we're using, dissolve away. So this is an important thing for people to know. So they realize that this is, this is, a, this is the norm. At first it may seem strange, but it quickly becomes, ah, I no longer need that outer shell. Your vision becomes 360 degrees because that's a natural state. That's your natural perception. You can, you can perceive in all directions simultaneously. That's our natural state. So you drop the facade, you drop the form. And of course, as you do, you become more and more liberated from the form. And that's what gets exciting because then a whole new vista of opportunities of, let's just say knowledge opens up. Religious texts of all nations are filled with out-of-body experiences. The, the Christian Bible is filled with out-of-body experiences, with St. Paul talking about in 2 Corinthians that he was in the third heaven. And he talks about specifically the third heaven, the third dimensional reality. Buddha talks about having experiences beyond matter and enlightenment and becoming one with rivers of light. The Tibetan Buddhists in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, the entire book is devoted to going to the clear light of the void, going beyond the astral plane, going beyond the form-based realities, going to your what I perceive as my higher self or, or essence. All religious texts throughout history have talked about the importance of going beyond our physical bodies. The Quran is based on Muhammad's night journey where he left his body and actually what he terms in the Quran traveling through seven separate dimensions of reality and encountering spiritual beings. In other words, all spiritual texts, whether it be Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam, all the major religions talk about OBEs, about going beyond form, going beyond your body, going beyond the material world, and having experiences. In other words, we have a rich culture of this. This is not something new. People have been having out-of-body experiences since the beginning of time. They just called it something different. In the Bible, Revelations begins with, I was in the Spirit. What is that? I was in the Spirit. You know, it's, of course, people can term it many ways, but I feel it was strictly an out-of-body experience. It was moving beyond the physical world, definitely. And I think everyone would agree with that. All biblical texts are filled with people having experiences beyond their body. But in every culture, it had a different name, a different... Uh, um, label was placed on the experience but the bottom line is it's been taught and practiced since the beginning of time and this is just a modern reconnection to an old practice that's been around for since the beginning of time one of the great benefits of out-of-body exploration is that during your experience you can absolutely provide healing for yourself and for others by just your intention. If your intention is healing, the healing will be provided. If you are open and receptive for healing to occur, and if your intention is focused on healing, that energy will be provided for you. The key is to focus your intention, in other words, healing now, make it a simple direct, focused intention, and then be open to receive, and it will occur. Many people have written to me, thousands and thousands of people have written to me from all over the world who have requested healing of themselves and others, and they have experienced this. 
they have opened themselves up to be an open, receptive channel for healing. Because all healing comes from the inside. All healing comes from spirit and then moves out into matter. And when you leave your body, you're closer to the source of true healing because you're closer to the source of, re of true reality, of spirit. You're closer to the reality of our true self and of God. And because of that, we're closer to the reality, of course, of our own healing. I teach a technique where you actually create a globe of healing energy. During an out-of-body experience, you create this globe of orange healing energy. And you can send this healing energy to a loved one or to yourself. And this is an incredibly powerful experience. It's a life-changing experience for people. Uh, for many people, uh, the best time to do this is when during a period where they're already tired. They're beginning, for instance, the uh, middle of the day, they may be willing to take a, a short nap. And they, many people move to their sofa, and they begin to just lay down and begin to allow themselves to begin this process of relaxation. For many people, it only takes about 10 minutes. This is not a lengthy process. It's very easy. And most people find it quite enjoyable also because you're just allowing yourself to let go and relax completely. For out-of-body exploration is different than traditional meditation because in traditional meditation we are trained to sit in a lotus position. For most people that's a little too uncomfortable and they just can't get into the ideal state for out-of-body exploration. So I always recommend that people lay down and become as relaxed as possible. And feel that relaxation spreading from head to toe as you allow every thought to just take you deeper and deeper. And, of course, it also helps to turn off the phone to allow yourself to be in a comfortable, quiet location where you will not be disturbed. Uh, this is the, f the first essential part of out-of-body exploration. Next, after you feel your body becoming as relaxed as possible, then you begin to do one of the many out-of-body techniques that I write about. Uh, in my books, I've included over 50 different techniques. Focus on your intention first. In other words, I feel intention is extremely important. In other words, you place in your mind your firm intention, now I have an out-of-body experience. Now I am open to have an out-of-body experience. Now I am receptive to an out-of-body experience. In other words, you begin to program yourself to be open to these experiences. And this is a very important part of the entire process. Next, you actually begin to do one of the out-of-body techniques that are available. And there's many of them that I, I have written about and that I use in my workshops. Uh, the easiest way to, to do the target technique is to select one location and three objects that are perhaps in one room of that home. Uh, but it can be any objects that you wish. It could be, for instance, a sculpture, a painting, and a chair. It really doesn't matter, but make it three real physical objects that are located in someone's home that you know well, or even another part of your own home. But absolutely focus your unlimited attention upon these three objects. The idea here is to focus and maintain your undivided attention away from your physical body as you're allowing your physical body to completely relax to the point where your body can go to sleep. And you hold that intention you hold that focus away from your body as your last conscious thought, as your body is going to sleep. This is what will help to initiate the out-of-body experience. 
the key is to become as relaxed as possible to the point where you will begin to actually drift off into a, a dreamlike or a sleep state. Become that relaxed and hold that intention, hold your focus as your last conscious thought. This works extremely well with repetition. Um, another really effective and easy technique is simply using affirmations. In other words, just, just imagine and feel yourself relaxing and as we talked about a little bit earlier and then begin to just select affirmations such as now I'm out of body now I have an out of body experience whatever affirmation that is effective or resonates with you and mentally repeat the affirmation as you're falling asleep it's probably the easiest technique we can possibly imagine as you, every night as you're falling asleep it is just easy to just think and focus on now I have an out-of-body experience uh, most out-of-body experiences are very brief uh, most people's experiences are in several minutes up to maybe a half an hour at most so it really doesn't interfere with your sleep cycle Matter of fact, uh, most people consider the experiences so enlightening and so exciting that uh, they don't mind missing a little bit of sleep because uh, this is a powerful opportunity to obtain answers. Many people experience what I call the vibrational state as a prelude to their out-of-body experiences. And this is a very common experience. During sleep, many people experience vibrations, noises, voices, partial paralysis. It could be music, it could be humming, it could be a floating sensation. All of these sensations, including falling, are all part of the prelude to an out-of-body experience. And everyone has these experiences to one degree or another. This prelude is called the vibrational state. This is the, in a sense, the doorway to the out-of-body experience. This is what many people can relate to because it's universal. Based on the survey I did of 18,000 people across the world, 47 countries, 95% of people experience some form of vibrational state phenomena during sleep and it manifested for different people in different ways. Sometimes it's a subtle experience, like a vibration, or hearing a voice, or hearing your name called, or being touched during sleep, or feeling the sensation of energy flow, or whatever, it, however it manifests, this is the beginning of an out-of-body experience. And this is very important for people to realize because unfortunately in our culture, people don't know this they slough it off because they don't understand the importance of it matter of fact they consider it un unimportant completely and the more we begin to recognize a connection the more we can begin to use these vibratory experiences as a awakening point as a launch pad for OBEs because this is the beginning point for many of us to begin to explore beyond the body because in a sense our higher self is telling us to be prepared get ready something's about to happen often people also don't realize that this is also part of trance state phenomena the same kind of phenomena that people experience in at the beginning of the sleep cycle the vibratory state and during sleep is also experienced during deep trance states when you relax the body enough, you will experience the same kind of phenomena. In other words, there's a direct relationship between sleep and trance state. They are both altered states of consciousness. We're beginning to shift our awareness from the physical body 
and to our other energy bodies. We're beginning to move inward. And as we do, our physical body will begin to let go. Our physical body, paralysis for instance, is a natural state that many people unfortunately are afraid of even today because they don't realize that partial paralysis of the body is just us letting go of the body. That is just a natural prelude. Based on my survey, over 60% of people will experience either partial, limited paralysis of some kind, or their name called, or vibrations, or some kind of energy sensation, often their name will be called. All of this is all part of the natural transition of consciousness. And it's not something to be feared, it's something to welcome because then we know we're entering an altered state. For those that are having some issue, having their first experience, the most important thing I would tell you is have patience. It's extremely important to absolutely do the techniques on a daily basis. They're brief, they're easy to do, they're easy to incorporate in your life. This is not a difficult thing. We don't have to go into a cave and meditate for 30 years. This is simply, as you're falling asleep, you do an easy to do technique. But do it every day. It takes two minutes. Hold your intention as your last conscious thought. My, the main point here is that we can easily incorporate this in our lives. We can easily incorporate this into our daily uh, life by just doing a simple technique. But yes, it does take a little ded dedication. I recommend that everybody invest 60 days in doing a technique. Some people have the experience the first day. Some people can just read a book about the experiences and spontaneously have an experience. Everyone's different. It depends on your personal blocks that you're holding. Because that's what holds us back. Let's face it, as soul, as spirit, as consciousness, all of us can naturally, out-of-body experiences are our natural state of being. Think about it. We're going to drop this body. This isn't me. I'm going to drop this form and move on to a higher expression of myself. Like a butterfly, in a way, dropping the chrysalis of matter. We are all going to move on. The natural state is out-of-body. This is the block, this is the block with our self-identity, our fears, our limits. So have patience. You know, Buddha didn't become enlightened in, uh, overnight. And out-of-body exploration, is an, it takes some time, some people, some dedication and a little bit of practice. But it's worth the practice. It's worth the time invested. Uh, there is a connection between dreaming, lucid dreaming, and out-of-body experiences. I refer to it in my books as a continuum of consciousness. Dreams, of course, basic dreams are often we remain unaware like a, like a vague observer of reality. Where we, when we begin to explore lucid dreams, we are becoming more aware in the experience. Out-of-body experiences take this to the next level. Lucid dreaming is a launch pad for out-of-body experiences. For example, I teach techniques where you can take a lucid dream and actually upgrade the experience into a full-fledged out-of-body experience. One of the techniques that I teach is that when you're in the lucid dream, which means that you're, you are beginning to become aware, essentially, within the dream and many people today are exploring this. Well, how do you take this experience and begin to expand it into a full OBE? First, you recognize that you're dreaming. That is the beginning of the lucid dream. Then, you use a simple technique that I call awareness now. You use it as a mantra, awareness now. You demand awareness in your dream. And with that, you, you will feel sometimes a rush of energy and the old dream will dissolve away. 
the old dream will collapse. And often what people experience is they will find that they are actually floating just out of sync or close to their bodies. Often it's almost like they're hovering just outside of their body. The whole dream experience was in a sense a partial out-of-body experience. And once you upgrade that experience, you fully recognize where you are in reality. You're absolutely out of body. And from that point, you can begin to control that experience. You begin to move away from your body. But the dream does not become real. And this is, many people are confused. The dream is not the reality. The lucid dream is often not the reality. During a lucid dream, most people, based on my research of 35 years and my experiences, if you upgrade the experience, a dream will dissolve away, it will disintegrate, and you will experience a new reality or enter a new reality. But they are, all dreams, lucid dreams, and out-of-body experiences are connected. Just like in the physical world, we have, we have different states of consciousness. For instance, sleep is an altered state of consciousness. Very few people understand it. Science really doesn't understand it. We know we have REM periods during sleep. But science to this day does do not know what happens during those eight hours we're asleep. So all of this is connected. The key is to bring more and more awareness into your experience so you can take control of the experience. So you are as at least as conscious as you are in the physical body. My goal is always to be at least, that's the bottom, that's the base memory, that's the base state of consciousness that's acceptable. It is never a dreamlike quality to it. Uh, the whole idea in out-of-body exploration is to be as conscious and aware as possible so you can get the most from your experiences. You can absolutely learn and experience the most as, as possible from each experience. And the key to that is your awareness because that's the one thing that we do control is our own awareness. So simple techniques can work. Fear is one of the greatest blocks that limit us. A fear of the unknown, fear of death, fear of many things that hold us in, in a sense, in a, in a, our own personal prison, holding us within our limits. Um, many people have, for instance, fears of they're not going to be able to return to their bodies. Uh, this is an absolutely unjustified fear. Be, uh, I personally have been having out-of-body experience for 35 years and I'm still here healthy as ever. Um, we are connected. We are hardwired to the body. In a sense, uh, you could call it the silver cord. Uh, it's talked about in the Bible. We are hardwired to the body and we only can permanently leave when the time is right for us. There is absolutely no fear of not being able to return to the body during an out-of-body experience. We automatically return with any random thought of the body. What's absolutely funny here is that the opposite is actually true. For most people, the difficulty is staying out of their bodies because we have a tendency to think of our bodies as us. Our self-identification is with our bodies. And when we are having an out-of-body experience, any random thought of your physical form will instantly bring you back to your physical body. So the opposite is actually true. We have to train ourselves to think and to forget about our bodies, to focus beyond our bodies, to focus on your new experience and your new energy body you're having. So the fears of not returning are completely unjustified. Uh, one of the things that I teach in my workshops and in my writing is for people to go beyond their fear. Uh, one of the techniques that I, I use is simply to place your fear in a box and then allow that box to be buried. Write down the fears that you have. You know, confront the, your fears. Be specific. If you have a fear of the unknown, write down your fear of the unknown. Your, what is your fear? Fear of death. 
write down that fear of death and then place it in a box. You can also take that writing of your fear and then dispose of it. You can burn the fear. You can burn it with a flame, put it in a fireplace and allow it to be dissipated. Or you can absolutely flush it away. In other words, there's many ways that techniques that, have, that are available that can help you to remove the, the cultural fear that we've all been conditioned to accept in our lives. But once you go beyond the fears, you realize with your first out-of-body experience that the fears are really unjustified. They were just training that we had as children. And that the, it is absolutely, there is nothing to fear. Uh, that's the first thing that I learned from my first experience is that I had freedom, I had complete freedom. And that all the fears that I had previously held were totally unjustified. Many, many people have found that out-of-body experiences provide an incredible opportunity to remove your internal blocks fears, limits that we carry from birth. We have been conditioned with fears. We have been conditioned to believe that we're a hunk of flesh. We've been conditioned to identify with this dense body as being us. This is a very negative conditioning. It's also a very false conditioning because soul is not any of these things. Soul exists as pure energy, as pure spirit. One of the great benefits of out-of-body exploration is that it gives us a powerful opportunity to absolutely move beyond the body and to eliminate our personal blocks, our personal limits, our, and all of these energy things that no longer serve us can be eliminated. I teach an easy technique where we actually, during an out-of-body experience, you demand to have all of your blocks removed. You demand to have your fears removed. You make that demand, you make that request. Now my fears are gone. Now my blocks are gone. In other words, you free yourself of these fears and limits and negative conditioning. Because when it all comes down to it, this is all about negative conditioning, of false conditioning, of distorted conditioning. And during an out-of-body experience, once you begin to disconnect from the body and you go inward, you begin to experience your spiritual essence, you can absolutely begin to f feel these things being removed. And even more powerfully, you can absolutely ask. You can make the request and the demand, now all of my physical fears are gone. I travel all over the world. I'd lived in China for the last four years. And for me, the most exciting experience I still have today is a fully conscious out-of-body experience. There's no comparison. It's, it's a mind-blowing, fun experience that just opens your mind to endless possibilities and endless realities within ourselves or I wouldn't still be pursuing it. If it wasn't fun, if it wasn't exciting, I wouldn't do it anymore. I wouldn't pursue it. So keep that in, a lot of people talk about the serious aspects of this. And but I, I get a lot of letters from people to tell me, hey, I, especially in the beginning, they're doing it for the fun of it. They're doing it, they're doing it because they enjoy flying. There's no limits, remember. They enjoy that sensation of pure freedom. It's just a, a very liberating experience. And it goes way beyond all of our concepts that we have of time and space and form-based realities. And that is what makes it just so exciting and fun. The benefits of this experience and of pursuing out-of-body exploration is that often your priorities will rapidly change. You s suddenly realize beyond the shadow of a doubt what's truly important. You realize that the day-to-day -day existence is a temporary fleeting show, 
like a drama that you're just a participant in. You, you begin to look at life uh, very objectively. You look at it uh, almost as a, a, a show that's evolving around you, but you're separated from the show. It's, but most importantly, you get a different perspective. Like for instance, I don't, I, I feel, for instance, I, I focus on what I feel is important. I no longer am concerned about the physical aspects because I know they'll be provided. I know that I am provided for. I know that everything I need is provided as long as I, I hold my focus. I don't have to participate in dramas in the physical world. I don't have physical issues uh, that are, and dramas and conflicts. Uh, those things are worked out on the inner worlds. We have the ability to evolve in a much more elegant manner because once we ex ex expand our ex beyond the physical, we can begin to have our lessons beyond the physical. Many, many people forget that the whole purpose for living is to learn from experience. That's what this is. The physical world is a tough, experiential world where once you go beyond it, you begin to have, you begin to, let's say, take your learning to a different level. And you can begin to have, evolve and grow in Without the drama, without the conflicts, without the health issues, you can begin to absolutely focus on what is important. And that is not only your own evolution, but the evolution of everyone around you. That's why I feel it's important to share this information. Because the more that we grow, the more we can evolve beyond the need for the drama and the conflict and the harshness of the physical world we can begin to explore and expand our own state of consciousness without the need for this, the linear problems that everyone is dealing with today. And we can begin to accelerate our own evolution. That's the bottom line. Out-of-body exploration is a direct and powerful path to absolutely accelerate our personal evolution beyond matter. And that's where evolution is taking us. Everybody, everybody talks about evolution, but they miss the big point. The big point is evolution is not about the change in physical things. That's the result. Evolution is our own spiritual evolution from matter into a, a spiritual being that has the ability to create any reality, that has the ability to shape and mold their own future. We are unlimited spiritual beings that have the ability to create our own life, our own surroundings we have the unlimited ability to create everything we need but we have to embrace that and once you leave your body you quickly realize that your thoughts are powerful that your awareness is powerful that we create our own reality that you shape and mold it with the very power of your intention and it happens instantly when you're out of body so there's no doubt there's none of that time lag and delay of matter. You quickly, when you focus on an apple, the apple appears. When you focus on healing, healing appears. When if you, if you, anything you focus upon will create that because you're no longer limited by the denseness of form and matter. And these are all lessons that we quickly learn about being becoming one with our spiritual essence and embracing our unlimited freedom our unlimited ability to create our own life. And that is what makes this so powerful for people because they experience it. It's first-hand experience. Not reading in a book, not theory, not beliefs, not faith. This is all about personal experience, taking it to that next level, going beyond the lateral dense evolution and moving above moving beyond really the animal evolution because evolution this let's face it we're all moving inward all of us are moving inward death is nothing more than the dropping of a dense vehicle and moving inward all six billion people on the planet today are all moving in one direction inward they're all to drop this dense facade 
and they're going to have an out-of-body experience and they're going to move inward to the next energy dimension. That is what, that's the only direction we're all traveling. To not know about this is crazy, I think, because then you're negating your own path. The path to the soul, the path to the self, the path to our liberation is inward. It's an inward journey of consciousness. And the more that we're aware of this journey, the more that we will evolve ourselves quicker, more ele elegantly. And this is essential, I feel, for all of humanity to learn. Let's, what is death but an out-of-body experience? Everyone it will have an out-of-body experience because it's the only direction we're all traveling. It's about time we learn this. It's about time all of humanity learn this. Imagine, if everyone had an out-of-body experience, there'd be no wars. There'd be no conflicts. It would eliminate the drama, the harshness of the physical world. Because people would suddenly realize what they truly are. They, they would, their priorities would come in the, uh, to focus. They would realize that the path is inward. It's not this play, this external facade that will all just dissolve away. And suddenly everyone's priorities will be crystal clear. Anyway, the bottom line is this is the path to soul. This is the path, to, if you wish to call it God, this is the inward path we all travel. So let's learn it. Let's explore it. Let's, let's, let's become one with it. Let's learn how to move beyond our physical limits and experience our true self.